Well, welcome back to another episode of the Neptune Micro Tug 9 build. Uh, I should say eventually this episode will be out. Uh, I'm back from my trade show that I had to go to last week for work. Uh, but unfortunately, back home, it is frigid outside. Um, as I record this, I've had the lights on and the heater on for probably about four, five hours today so far. And it is just not warming up in here. The wind is, is crazy. Actual air temp outside right now at one o'clock in the afternoon is minus two. Wind chill is currently minus 17. And tomorrow our high temperature for the day is minus 14 with 35 to 55 below zero uh, wind chills. So even though this is a semi-insulated room, semi-insulated semi shop, this door is just, I mean, it's just the wind, you can hear it. It's uh, whistling around out there. And I've been standing out here for all of a minute and a half now recording this, and I'm already starting to get chilly. So I, uh, if I had to guess, it's not above freezing in here, even with the heater and lights on. Uh, for four or five hours, it's just too cold to work. So, and the next thing I need to do is uh, uh, mix up epoxy or resin for the cabin, and it's just too cold for it to uh, to even try to set. So, uh, next few days, no go. So, and then I got another trade show next week coming up, and I'm gone for a week and a half. So, maybe over the weekend I'll get something done. It's supposed to be in the mid thirties outside and I uh, should be able to get shop warm enough to do something. So we'll see, hopefully soon. Hmm. Minus 16. Nope, still too cold. And my space heater broke. I'm gonna take it apart, see if I can fix it, but I ordered a new one just to be sure I have something to keep me warm when the temperature actually does warm up. Oh, hello, Jersey. How you doing? Yeah? Space heaters are good, aren't they, huh? That's Jersey, our Hungarian Pumi. So I'm not going out there, but that's the backyard, snow covered. The fence is a three foot fence. It's about a third covered. So that's 12 inches of snow sitting out there. It's cold. Well, I'll do a cold weather test just to see if our grease is holding up. Oh yeah. That moves nicely. Holy shit, is it cold out here? Whew, I'm going back inside. It's um, finally above zero in Southeast Wisconsin. And I have sort of heated my shop. I've got a new space heater right there uh, because my old one, which is right there, decided to stop working. Actually, it kind of still works, but the the switch is all finicky, so I'm going to take it apart, see if I can fix it. Um, but in the meantime, I went ahead and bought a new one, which oscillates and actually blows air rather than just kind of radiating it out. So I'm hoping that this one will uh, heat the shop a little bit faster than what the other one did. Um, in addition to the halogen lights that I have in here, those burn nice and hot. I'm hoping that the rest of the winter I'll be able to continue to work out here um, as as the temperatures you know go back and forth we are 12 8 12 to 15 degrees something like that today actually it may have hit about 18 degrees today but uh, still pretty cold but the sub-zero temperatures are gone for the time being 
we're actually in, a, in for a little bit of a warm spell here in the next few days. We are actually in for a little bit of a warm spell here the next few days. It's supposed to be in the mid 40s, mid to upper 40s here over the weekend into Monday, Tuesday. Uh, today is February 1st, end of January, most of February, typically the coldest months here in, in um, Wisconsin. I knew that I was going to have a little bit of a slowdown as we enter these months. I uh, was hoping not to go three, four days without doing anything outside of work trips. Um, so I did have a work trip that was uh, five, six days long, something like that last week and then I came back to sub-zero temperatures and about 12 to 14 inches of snow. So <laughs> wasn't able to do anything on the tugboat uh, those days because I was either clearing snow or just avoiding the cold altogether. So hopefully over the weekend uh, with the temperatures warming back up and with a new space heater, I can start working on some of the cabin pieces which are sitting right back there. Um, it's time to install those side pieces and then start placing the, uh, the front pieces together, which starts with the centerpiece of the cabin right here, this, this uh, straight section. And then I still have to cut these, these side pieces out because those are custom fit. So I got to figure out how I'm actually going to install that front piece. Um, I'm probably going to rig up something on the ceiling here. Uh, to where I can suspend that in the space while I epoxy it and fiberglass it uh, in place. The side pieces I think are probably fairly easy to do without rigging up anything. Uh, maybe just a little bit of clamping pressure to do that. Uh, but I do have to trim these side pieces because uh, if you remember, if you watched any of these videos, I do have a bit of an edge that has to be trimmed off of, uh, of these pieces. So I'm going to get the, well, probably the oscillating tool out to cut those off. Uh, I don't know if I'll get those done today. It's late in the day on Friday and, uh, you know, it's beer time. So, uh, I've already poured one of those right there. I'm drinking, uh, by the way, if you're interested in beer, I do a beer podcast with some friends of mine called Bearded Hops Podcast. Uh, so I'll do a little shameless plug here. Um, if you want to check out our beer podcast, we do broadcast on Wednesday nights live at 8.30 on YouTube. Uh, search for Bearded Hops. Uh, but Bearded is not like B-E-A-R-D-E-D. -E -E it's B-E-E-R-D-E-D, -E 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 Bearded Hops. So we do a beer review and an interview uh, with someone in the industry every week. So if you're interested in beer, you know, check it out. Today I'm drinking, um, <laughs> it's called Breakfast for Kings, although it is uh, about 5.30 in the, 5.15, 5.30 in the evening on Friday. Uh, I'm drinking a beer called Breakfast for Kings. I did a beer review on this just recently. This is an Imperial Stout brewed with cinnamon and bourbon barrel aged with coffee beans. Uh, super delicious. Uh, Raised Grain Brewery is in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be uh, drinking this evening. While I figure out what I'm going to do with tugboat pieces like that. I don't really want to go outside at this point because like I said, it's still only in the teens and that just makes me cold thinking about it. Although it's better than minus 25 to minus 27 that we had the other day. So I am super happy with the new space heater. It's uh, like I said, it's in the teens outside. It is currently, this one even has a, has a uh, thermometer on it. It is currently 40 degrees in the shop. So 16 degrees outside, 40 degrees in the shop, uh, which isn't quite warm enough to uh, work with the resin. I'd like to see it much closer to 60 degrees, uh, 70 ideally, but 70 in the shop this time of year, probably not gonna happen. Epoxy will cure at 60 degrees. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, so it's two hours at 70 degrees in standard humidity, um, at 60 degrees in dry air, the, the cooler temperatures uh, definitely make it take a little bit longer to cure. So we'll see what happens here over the weekend. Looking forward to getting back to work on this thing for a few days anyway. I, hopefully in the next five to six days before I leave for Phoenix, Arizona and Seattle, Washington in the same trip, uh, I can get some stuff done on the tugboat. So. Welcome back officially to the Wisco Butter channel. I'll say that now because it's actually warm enough 
in the shop, outside and in the shop, to where I can do some work. The uh, earlier parts of this particular video were just kind of explaining what was uh, what was going on and what was to come. I'm actually going to start working on the cabin. All I've all I've done so far is clamp these in place so that I could trim off um, that right there to make it match up with the gunnel. It's clamped in place. It's not glued, but that's what I'm going to work on today is getting those two pieces glued in place. So I'm also going to get the, the top arch, the first piece, put in place. And it looks to fit pretty nicely. So I will unclamp these, mix up some epoxy, and cut a little piece of fiberglass just to tab it to the, the deck here. And then after it's all set up and cured, I'll come back and do the, uh, let's see right there, up and down that area with some two inch tape. That is the plan of attack. I feel like there's just something else I should be doing before I start gluing these in place, but there really isn't. So I'm gonna undo the clamps, just make a little mark on each side support so that I know where to stop spreading epoxy. There's my line, so this area right here will get covered in epoxy and then clamped on to the bench. And then I'll put a little tab in place on the deck. And then I'll spread some epoxy up top here so that I can clamp the arch in place. I'm just gonna mix up um, six tablespoons of epoxy and see where that takes me. It should be pretty close what I need, maybe even a little bit more, but I'm at the end of the can, taking a long time to get all of it out. And of course the new can comes out super fast. Okay, well I mentioned earlier in the video that I like to see 60 degrees in here before I start doing epoxy, it is 51. So definitely cooler than I would like, but I'll leave the heater and the uh, halogen lights going all day today. And hopefully the uh, temperature will keep climbing and I can get that 60 degrees temperature that I want to see. It will cure at 50, it just takes longer. Okay, got the brush, the scissor, and two inch tape. So I'm just gonna brush on epoxy in this area, clamp it in place and then do the tape. So it should be fairly simple, straightforward. All right, so I got a little primer in the wood. I'm not gonna let it dry, but I'm gonna slather on another fairly thick layer. I don't really care about that song. That's like, I don't know what I was going to say. I used more epoxy than I thought I would on this side, so I'm going to mix up another six tablespoons for the other side. Uh, and I should have enough to then do the arch after I get that side done. So um, looking for some place that I can paint this leftover epoxy. Actually, I'll do it right back here on the, you won't be able to see it, but I'm going to paint the control arm for the motor. Here's what I just did is just coated the uh, uh, the control horn, control horn, control arm back here. Put a little extra epoxy down on the seam right down there. And now I'm going to do the other side over there. Set. Now, I'm going to 
coat a little bit up here. A little bit over here. So the first arch is in place. Um, down here, I tabbed the side supports in place on both sides, same thing there. Uh, and then just drizzled epoxy down that seam right there and right down in here. Uh, after this cures, I will come back and uh, put some two inch tabbing. I did a tab there and another one uh, right there. But I have to come back and do some tabbing there all the way around. Same thing over here. I might do some gap filling first. I ran a tape line <clears throat> off the uh, right off the center line of the stern up to the top of the cabin. Uh, the, the rear roof support anyway, and then down to the front uh, bow post. So this will help me maintain a nice straight center line while I'm working the other roof supports. I'll just adjust that piece of tape as I move forward. Hopefully it stays in place. It's, uh, it's kind of obtrusive is the word, I guess. So we'll see how that works. But uh, that's my center line, and that should keep everything nice and straight. Okay, I'm going to take the clamps off and then fill in this gap with some resin and uh, chopped strand fibers and then put a layer of fiberglass over the top of that. So, clamps off here, hopefully nothing cracks and moves. All good. Okay, clamps are removed from both sides. I also just removed the clamps off the top arch uh, for the rear roof beam. And now I'm gonna make up, make up, mix up some epoxy and fill these gaps. Hoping that I've got a pretty decent angle on the camera here where you can see what I'm doing. So I've got a pretty decently thick slurry here with the chop steering fibers. And the idea is to fill the gap and not let it flow. So the thicker, Slurry should help you just that. And I'm doing this instead of the, the green filler because the resin with chopped strand fibers is extremely strong. Once it cures, uh, there is there's no breaking it. The wood, just like just like well, it's just like resin by itself is supposed to be stronger at the joint than the wood itself, but uh, this will this will create an extremely extremely strong bond. The fibers just latch on. And man, my new here is <laughs> rock star. It is quite nice and warm in here. I mean, the thermostat on the heater says 64 right now. Uh, 37 outside, so. It's obviously not working as hard as it would have been earlier this week when I didn't do anything because it was negative 25 outside. Still quite nice to have 64 degrees in the shop, especially on resin days. And I'm just doing a fillet all the way up and down. Got some squeeze out on the back side here, which is fine. Clean that up nicely. We'll do side. Same thing over here. This side doesn't actually need quite as much. The gap is smaller. So the six tablespoons that I mixed up should be about perfect. Can't do anything with my left hand apparently. Can't even get in there with my right hand. Well, that didn't go exactly perfectly as planned, but 
did okay. All right, so that's what the fillet looks like. So now I'm going to take, I did the same thing on that side. Now I'm going to take some tape, some fiberglass tape, and clean up and just lay up over the top of that fillet, down around there, and that little gap right there on both sides. So now I'm going to start taping up these joints. And I'm just using uh, six ounces or six uh, tablespoons of resin as I've been doing. I've already got the, um, the base for it laid down. So all I got to do is cut to a proper piece length, uh, length and then lay it in place. So we'll figure out how much we need here. Well, I apologize, my phone ran out of memory um, <laughs> right as I was starting this. So um, I erased some things and just gonna be able to show a quick video of the, uh, the two inch tapes that I did on top of the uh, chop strand fiber fillet. Both sides are done. And I was able to get the back side covered as well on both sides. So once this cures, the uh, that clamp and this clamp can come off. And I can continue working on the, the sides of the cabin, which are sitting right there. So that's what's next. Now it's uh, time to relax the rest of the day. And just let this stuff do its thing. I have a pretty exciting update, I guess. It's, it's going to seem like a lot of progress, but it's really not. You see all those pieces right there? That's all the trimmings of what was an extremely annoying iterative process to get to this point. Now, don't worry, you didn't miss much. Uh, I just was not going to record the uh, three hours of back and forth and back and forth. I bet I made, between these two pieces, I probably made 15 to 20 trips in here, out there, in batches back and forth constantly. So you did miss that, but there isn't really anything else done here except have the, uh, the cabin sides clamped in place. So. Here's what I did. I had to make a bigger notch right there to fit over the quarter round. The instructions don't say anything about not installing the quarter round when I did. Um, it probably could have been, should have been installed after I had the sides um, in place, but whatever, that's, uh, that's done. I also had to trim Right in there, I've got a little bit of a gap to fill. That's no big deal. This here had to be trimmed. That not, had to be notched. Because before, I had just trimmed this cabin side piece. You can see the mark. I had it trimmed to the deck. Uh, but it has to be trimmed to the side support to uh, fit over like that. Okay. I also trimmed the back of the cabin to be flush with the cabin side support and found out also that either I mismeasured by three quarters of an inch or something just isn't quite right. But this isn't a big deal either. Um, the top of the cabin side should be flush with the top of the cabin side support. It's about, you know, it's about five eighths of an inch um, in difference. So what I'm gonna do is just come back up here and after this is all um after this is all resin glued in place nice and sturdy but before the rooftop goes on i'm going to come back here and i'm just going to mark a line gradually coming down to meet that so the arch is going to be just a little bit different than plans but it's not going to make any difference it actually there's actually a little bit of a raise right there anyway so uh, that the other side is the exact same way you can see it it uh, doesn't quite match up perfectly with the top of the cabin sides so um, 
I don't know if I'll get much more of a chance to work on this tonight, but this is uh, this actually might be a stopping point of this video before I start gluing, um, just because I think I might have enough to put a video out. And then I travel for work um, for an, another week, week and a half. So this update will be, um, oh, this here, you might be wondering what the green strap is. That's to pull the, the cabin side supports back just a little bit so that they're level. Okay, so the free needs to come back just a little bit more right about there. But I'll work on that once, I mean, I'll make sure and get it all squared up before I actually start gluing. Things did move a little bit because I actually knocked that clamp off while I was working on that side. Uh, and I just kind of, I just reclamped it back in place. So it's not, uh, it's not perfectly squared up right now, but I'll make sure and get that done before everything gets glued. So the fit is really nice. Corners come right up to where they, sh where they're supposed to on both sides. Um, I've got, uh, an easy glue joint and gap to fill there. And then, uh, that's going to be, that's super easy as well. There's going to be a hoss pipe, um, put in right here, which will kind of act as a, as a deck drain, but also, um, uh, it'll be a place where I can put ropes through for, uh, fenders or, uh, mount some tires or whatever it's going to do. I think there's, uh, there's a, there's a hoss pipe that might go here, 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 and then one more in the back, I think. Um, I'll have to look at the plans, but, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So it actually looks a little bit better without the bright lights on it. So there's the cabin sides. Exciting stuff. We'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed watching. Hit that subscribe button. Tell your friends. Send me some comments. And uh, let me know what you're working on if you're working on anything. See you next time, everybody.